<laughs> Trump always has those. Um, well, how, how do I want to phrase that? Um, very stern handshakes. Like he like yanks the person over to him. It's always funny how that works out. Hopefully one day I'm able to get one of those handshakes and he's he's trying to yank me and we're having like that little handshake battle he always has with folks. But um, so uh, we, we have one with Joe Rogan today. All right. Uh, first off, like, share, comment, and of course hit that subscribe button if you are new. Please make sure you are still subscribed to the channel. As I've stated previously in previous videos, I have realized that I've been unsubscribed from certain channels or have my notifications switched from all notifications to, I think it switched to like personalized or something. So I wasn't even getting notifications from some channels. Um, so make sure your notifications are still turned on to all notifications and make sure you're still subscribed to the channel because I've been unsubscribed from channels recently. But um, like I was saying, we have a discussion about Joe Rogan today, uh, but before we hop into the meat and potatoes of that, I have a question. What are the chances that Joe Rogan interviews Uncle Trump on his podcast? What do you guys say? Give, give, give me, give me a, a percentage chance on uh, Uncle Trump going on the Joe Rogan podcast, because as some of you may know previously, Joe Rogan was completely against having uh, Uncle Trump on his podcast. Uh, and he went as far as just flat out saying it. Like he was like, I'm not trying to help Trump. I'm not a Trump fan, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, I, I, I watched the Joe Rogan podcast from time to time. And I have seen clips where he's come around, where he's acknowledged, yeah, I'm, I'm not voting Democrat. I'm voting Republican. And if it's Trump, it's going to be Trump, right? And more than likely, it's going to be Trump, you know? So he, he he's come around. So what do you guys think the chances are? And I'm, and I'm asking because obviously Joe Rogan has a massive, massive platform. Absolutely massive platform. Obviously, Uncle Trump is already massive himself. But, hey, I'll take every single W that we can get, baby. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not discriminating. OK, just just because Uncle Trump is in the lead right now doesn't mean I, I don't want the pedal pushed to the metal. All right. I'm trying to push the pedal to the metal, baby. And uh, I, I think being on the Joe Rogan podcast is one way to do that. All right. So, yeah, answer my question in the comment section. And uh, if you also would like to help me even further, watch this video until the very end. All right. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm massively. And with that being said, let's dive in. I think probably what happened was the response from Donald Trump, the, the response to Donald Trump being president. He was so polarizing and he attacked people in a way, the way that was so non-presidential and the way he would behave was so non-presidential that that's just his thing. When someone comes after him, he comes back at them even harder. Yeah. But when you're the president and you do that, it just gets everybody's panties in a wad. Yeah. And he's just fucking taking gallons of gasoline and chucking it on the fire. And so when mm -hmm. they got rid of him and they got him out of there, they're like, we got to make sure that's that never, never happens, happens again. again. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's going to happen again. It's yeah. going to happen again. He's coming back. And Facts. He, he might even win. But the will. This polarization has like hardened them. The thing with Trump because of Trump's behavior and the way he communicates, which I just think is a terrible way to communicate as a president. But if you're a supporter, you love it. You're like, yeah, yeah. stick it to him. Finally, someone sticks up for us. And so it's like, yeah, I get your feelings. I understand why you would love that. And I understand that he's right about many things. There's a crazy video that's out there that shows all the things that Donald Trump predicted if Joe Biden gets in office and how all of them have taken uh, place. Have you seen that video? No. I'm going to send it to Jamie because it's so wild. It's so wild. You watch it play out and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. Because it's, it's so crazy that um, it's, it's that blatant. But, like, you would think, like, wait a minute. Is, it, is, this, is this theatrical? I mean, this is but crazy. But at a, at a point, you st we're a two-party system with a, you know, nearly 50-50 split down the middle. Um, at no point w would I in that presidential position, like your job is to try to bring as many people from each respective side yeah. together. Yeah, bring everybody together. 
that not his approach? No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's, that's why it's it's so not it's not how a leader behaves. Like he was very he's got a huge ego, and that's what. And mind you, um, Joe isn't how a leader behaves either. So uh, if, if that's the if that's the standard, then. Um, Joe ain't much of a leader either, you know. Uh, I, if that's what you call a leader, holy, holy moly! Um, woo! Give me Trump all day, every day, twice on Sunday. <laughs> Goodness gracious! It's led him to this amazing amount of success that he's had. But that huge ego, once he gets into a position of power, here, play this from the beginning and give me some volume. Before I took office, there was a lot of folks out there, a lot of folks out there making some pretty bold predictions about how things would turn out. This vi hold on, stop for a second. This video does not sound like that. It sounds fine. What's coming through uh, the computer? Why is that happening? Because I played it to get today on my phone and it sounded perfect. They're coming for your guns, they're coming for your jobs, and they're coming for your freedom. They hate American energy and Joe Biden will shut it all down. He's going to. Uh, that if, if I became president, if Biden's elected, he will wipe out your energy industry. Another prediction that is my favorite one, I must add, is that if I got elected, gas prices going five, six, seven dollars for a gallon. Facts. Flood your communities with criminal aliens, drugs, and crime while they live behind beautiful gated compounds. All point. They try to take away your guns. Second Amendment. They want to take crazy. it away. While well, they enjoy private security that's fully armed. I never understood that one. They spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. You know, I, I, I think I think for a period of, you know, three years or four years. However long, we should stop all foreign aid. Now, I'm just a little old me, so I don't know the consequences. I'm sure there's some type of, you know, ramifications that are, are going to follow that, uh, that I'm not aware of. All right. Uh, anybody who is more knowledgeable on that, please let me know. But from my understanding of the situation, we're blowing a boatload of money outside of our borders for other nations in other areas of, of this planet which listen i'm all for helping folks right but when you have a nation in decline i think it's important that you help yourself first you know you, you I, I i look at it as like a caregiver right if the caregiver falls ill Who's going to give care to the people who need care? The caregiver, the caregiver needs to take care of their self first so that they can continue to take care of everybody else. Because if they break down, then everybody else falls with them. Just saying. That, that, that makes sense, right? I'm not a lunatic. Let, let me know in the comment section. So I, I, I think that we need to stop all of that, focus on what's going on in here, maybe even lower taxes while we're doing that, right? Because we're not spending so much money outside. We could just, hey, matter of fact, we lower in taxes for everybody. A fat, a, 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 I said a fat, a flat, <laughs> a flat 5% tax um, for everybody. 5%, 5% income tax. How about that? Sounds pretty good, don't it? 5%, woo! Yeah, that, that sounds mighty nice. Sounds mighty nice. But um, yeah, and then also just, you know, focus on making sure America is good. Fixing this homeless issue. Not just simply throwing money at it, but actually fixing it. Because as we've seen, just throwing money at the homeless issue ain't really doing a whole lot because it creates a conflict of interest. You're paying people to help the homeless, but if they help the homeless too much, then they don't have a paycheck still coming in. So you you, you, you need to play that balancing act and figure out how to actually, uh, uh, you know, navigate that, which I think is volunteer work personally, but that's just me. Uh, but there, there, there's a whole lot of other things going on. You know, obviously pricing of everything. You, you, you have <laughs> people who, never mind. I'm not even about to get into that whole discussion. Anyway, 
What do y'all think about that, though? What do y'all think? Let me know. Six months in. Here's where we stand. Do you want to use the word recession or depression? Think of a single mom. Before we put food on the table this month. You know, it's, uh, it's sad. So if your primary concern right now is inflation, we could stop it in 30 minutes. When I took office, he finally went outside. He went to get an ice cream. Well, the bottom line is this. I say you're not doing a very good job. Th this was can't campaigning take any pre election now from the press. Yeah. Wow. It was him campaigning pre election and what has actually taken place. Before I mean, I, took office. I mean, uh, it's just uncomfortable. It's wild and Spot on. what's interesting is even CNN is starting to push back against it like Don Lemon was interviewing the woman who is the new uh, press secretary for the White House yeah. and he was asking is Joe Biden going to be fit for 2024 and she's like he's fine he's great like what are you talking about and you're watching and you're going what the fuck are you talking about he's yeah. definitely not that's not true. Like, you know that's not true. Like, you're gaslighting us. Yeah, I saw Ocasio-Cortez asked if he if she would support the president in a 2024 run. And uh, she's like, ah, you know, let's, let's talk about the issues that we're trying to fix right now. And, uh, and they're like, yeah. so would you support the president? You didn't answer me. That's mm. what the journalist asked her. And she's like, um, you know, we have issues right now that we need to address first. And, like, and then she let her off, you know, but... Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. T it's gonna be. It's gonna be. Yeah. <clears throat> and like, like I've said it before, I think it's great that the mainstream media continues to try to push this narrative that everything is fine, everything is okay, right? Because it only makes them look worse. Especially now that people are waking up to the truth and realizing what's actually going on, it's only discrediting them. So when Uncle Trump gets back in office and he yells fake news, everybody's like, yeah. We've been watching it for the past four years since you've been gone. You are completely right. It is fake news. It's 100% fake news. They've been lying to us. So, you know, I, I, I think that is great in the fact that, you know, um, here in the next few years, mainstream media will be no more. It will be independent folks, you know, on YouTube and, you know, other, other places across the Internet that provide actual news. And there, there's a few different, you know, uh, news stations that actually do report news. Uh, maybe, maybe once Uncle John back is back in office, we can get back to actual, you know, mainstream news. Maybe. I doubt it because they're just so deep into it at this point. I think it would be really, really difficult for, you know, some of these mainstream platforms to do a complete 180 and actually just report the news and not opinions. And I think a lot of these personalities on the news would push back because there's no need for big person. Honestly, and, and listen, I'm not advocating for anybody to be fired, right? I, I understand people have families to feed uh, and, and, and roofs to, you know, put over their head. They have to provide for for families, but honestly, there's no need for these big news station or uh, mainstream media to have these big personalities on their shows and paying them millions upon millions and millions of dollars. In my humble opinion, in my humble opinion. Now, if they were just reporting the simple news, there wouldn't be a need. But of course, with the direction that they went, there's definitely a need Right. Because you have to have people believe somewhat what, what they're trying to tell folks. Um, but hopefully, what do you all think? Do you think we will we will ever get back to just strictly the news? Tell me what happened. And that's it. I don't care about your thoughts and your feelings about the situation. I don't care. That's not what I came to you for. When I go to mainstream media news, that's not what I come to you for. I come to you for the news. Let me know what happened while I was sleeping. Oh, a building burned down. Nice. Interesting. Did anybody get hurt? No. Great. Awesome. Nobody got hurt. Okay, cool. Don't give me, oh, well, because of Trump's policies and the, you know, I don't care. <laughs> because, you know, they always try to spin it to blame Uncle Trump, right? They got to blame Uncle Trump for everything. Trump got blamed for the, the train derailment in, uh, 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 East Palestine. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs>
Well, because of Trump's policies, the train derailed. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, he, Trump was 100% correct on all of his predictions. And I'm happy to hear someone like Joe Rogan actually speaking about it and uh, pointing it out. Like, yeah, Trump was right. Was 100% correct. Because, like I said, he has a, a, a massive platform that a lot of people tune into. Uh, actually, this isn't even... Uh, I was trying to see how many views this has, but I'm sure the clip from Joe Rogan's podcast has millions upon millions of views. I mean, some extraordinarily high number. So the more exposure that uh, Joe Rogan brings to Uncle Trump, the better. But as I asked earlier, do you guys think it's going to happen? The interview between Joe Rogan and Uncle Trump. Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.